Hi, my name is Dr. Leela Landowski and today we're going to be talking about somatosensation. So somatosensation is basically all the sensation that we get from our skin, from our internal organs, from our limbs and from our joints. And it's separate from our five special senses. So when I say five special senses, I mean taste, seeing, smelling, balance and hearing. So in terms of how somatosensation fits into the divisions of the nervous system, um, it happens as part of the sensory division of the peripheral nervous system. So the sensory division can actually be further divided into two other divisions. So there's the visceral sensory division, which is taking in all that information from our internal organs. So like our heart, our lungs, um, our blood vessels, our bladder and so forth. Now the somatic sensory division is taking information from the rest of our body, so our skin, our muscles, um, our eyes and our joints and so forth. In terms of how all of this happens, well it all has to start with a sensory receptor which is located in one of those body regions. Um, and there are a few different types of sensory receptors. So the first one is thermoreceptors. So thermoreceptors literally just respond to changes in temperature. It can be heat or cold. Um, in terms of mechanoreceptors, they're responding to mechanical stimulation. So touch, pressure, um, vibrations, stretch or itching. Um, and proprioreceptors, they're a very specific type of mechanoreceptors and they're basically located in joints or in muscles and they give us a sense of awareness of our body position. So for example, the fact that I could just put my hand on my chest is because of proprioception. I didn't actually have to look to make sure I put it there. I just had a sense of how my body was and where my body was that I was able to do that. So that's proprioception in action. Um, chemoreceptors, so they're basically responding to um, chemicals in the body, um, changes in our body chemistry. For example, changes in carbon dioxide, changes in glucose, um, changes in oxygen levels, and then our body then is able to respond to that because of chemoreceptors. We've also got nociceptors, so um, just like I've explained above with thermoreceptors, mechanoreceptors and proprioreceptors and chemoreceptors, there's a very similar thing happening with nociceptors. So there's thermal nociceptors which respond to ext extreme changes in temperature. We've got mechanical nociceptors which respond to extreme mechanical stimulation, so extreme pressure, um, even um, lacerations of your skin. And we've got chemical nociceptors which respond to um, chemical mediators that might be released in injury. So for example, when you injure your skin, um, the contents of cells will leak out into that tissue and will actually activate chemical nociceptors. And we've also got the special senses, which, um, you know, it's the smell, taste, um, hearing and so forth. Um, but we're going to be talking about somatosensation today, so I'm just going to be talking about those um, those first few there. Now you're probably wondering, well, what's the difference between a thermoreceptor and a thermal nociceptor? Well, it really just comes down to the threshold of that um, receptor. So for example, a thermoreceptor would be working within the range of say 33 degrees Celsius. That's when it's active and telling the brain that um, your body is working at a certain, your body is operating at a certain temperature. Whereas a nociceptor is working at more extreme temperatures. So for example, a cold nociceptor would be activated at 15 degrees. So I guess the regular nociceptors, sorry, the regular receptors such as thermoreceptors and mechanoreceptors and chemoreceptors are operating within the normal ranges of body function and nociceptors are telling us that there is um, an extreme change. So it's really a warning signal that tells us that we are being injured or that there's a high risk that we are going to be injured if we don't respond quickly to that stimuli. So how does it all happen? Great question. <laughs> So it all starts with the receptor that I've just described. So say we've got, um, you know, uh, I'm touching my skin. We're activating these mechanoreceptors, which are located in the nerve endings, sensory nerve endings in my skin. So those mechanoreceptors are activating that sensory neuron. 
So this is a sensory neuron, so a sensory neuron afferent will then send that information all the way up to the spinal cord. So let me just reiterate that. So the mechanoreceptor or whichever receptor it might be um, is being activated and it sends that signal all the way up to the spinal cord. Now this sensory neuron is what we call the first order neuron. It's the first part of that single signaling process. It's that sensory neuron afferent fiber that begins the process of us being able to perceive that stimuli. So you might notice from this diagram right above me here um, is that th this sensory neuron is terminating in a very specific part of the spinal cord called the posterior horn. Um, so that's where that sensory neuron is going to meet its next contact. It's going to synapse with a second order neuron. So in the spinal cord, that sensory neuron, see if I can just bring my mouse over here. Is that going to work? Oh, you can see it, great. So the sensory neuron is bringing in stimuli here. So that's that first order neuron and it's synapsing with a second order neuron here in that posterior horn. And as you can see, the po the, that, sense, that secondary neuron actually crosses over to the opposite side of the spinal cord and then travels up here through to the thalamus. So that second order neuron um, is sendi sending that signal up the spinal cord to um, the brain, specifically um, the thalamus in most cases. So once it has reached the thalamus, it then synapses with a third order sensory neuron. And that's that third order sensory neuron takes that signal up to the, um, the cerebral cortex, usually to the somatosensory cortex. So when we're talking about somatosensation, that's all being perceived here in the somatosensory cortex, um, which is located in your parietal lobe. Now, if we're talking about um, sound, for example, that would actually be um, transmitted to um, the auditory cortex in, in our temporal lobe. But we're talking about somatosensation today. So what you need to remember is that information is going to the somatosensory cortex. So there's a few things going on here that may raise a few questions. Number one, why is it going to the other side of the spinal cord and what's the significance of that? Well, why it's actually crossing over, there's a lot of theories we don't really know. But what you need to know in this situation is that it means that the stimuli, which you um, have on one, experience on one side of the body, is actually perceived in your brain on the contralateral side. And this is important, for example, if you were to have a traumatic brain injury or a stroke, for example, that damaged that part of your somatosensory cortex. That means you would have deficits in sensation on the opposite side of the body. Now you might also be wondering why is it just not going straight to the somatosensory cortex and why is it stopping in the thalamus? Well another great question because the thalamus is a really important integration center. So the thalamus is taking in information from all the different regions of the brain and it's allowing your brain to decide whether or how to respond to that particular stimuli. So for example, let's say that you've stubbed your toe or you, f you're, you feel pain in your foot and you look down and you see, oh yeah, I've just stubbed my toe. So, all right, you can get along with life. But say you look down and you can see that there's actually like a swarm of rats that are gnawing at your feet. Well, that information is going to be integrated at your thalamus and then you're going to run away or respond or do whatever it is to escape from that situation. That's where we actually have this perception of, um, of that sensation. So it allows us to figure out how to respond to that situation. And it's really important in a lot of other contexts that we often don't really think about. So for example, if you know if you've had a really bad day and sometimes things just feel worse, that's the thalamus at play. So for example, say um, you went to work, you had a job promotion, you saw your friends and you won a soccer game after work, you've had a great day. You stub your toe, all's fine, don't even think about it. Say you were late for work, you lost your job, you had a car accident on the way home and your 
came home and your cat was dead, you stub your toe, you're probably going to be in tears because you're going to be perceiving that pain as being a lot worse than it otherwise might have been. So really the thalamus is this integration centre which um, allows us to, um, I guess, rationalise the sensations that we, that our body is perceiving. Um, now I guess there's another thing that I'd like to mention just because you thought we were finished but we're not quite finished. So when this sensory information reaches your spinal cord, so let me just reiterate, you have that um, the sensory neuron, so the receptor on the sensory neuron is stimulated, that first order sensory neuron um, is sending that signal to the spinal cord. Once it reaches the spinal cord, it can either go up to the central nervous system or it can actually go in a little reflex arc out to the body. Um, to allow us to respond to that stimuli. Um, but we'll cover that a little bit later. So this really is somatosensation in a nutshell. Thank you.